Hello everybody, Russian Batman here. I'm back with another video. Sorry for the video quality is a bit different. I don't have my usual camera, so I'm just using my phone. Um, and today I actually wanted to record a tutorial. First tutorial um, is kind of, it's a tutorial of how to improve Thanos, but it's also kind of just a general customizing tutorial if you want to get into customizing. So yeah, um, so basically, right, is let's just say hypothetically, you got this Thanos in the $70 set. And you're like, oh, it's really cool. I got a Thanos that's bald. Thank God. But then you start to realize that this Thanos will really isn't that accurate. You're like, to at least to endgame Thanos, like the armor printing is really cool in here. But at the same time, he doesn't have the armor on the arms and he doesn't have the helmet, which I'm like, you're thinking like all right that's that's not end game thanos so you're like all right he's infinity war thanos but he's not because he has the armor printing so it's like this weird in between where it makes this thanos probably one of the least accurate thanos which is a shame because he has the new removable head thing so you wanted to let me remove this you wanted to customize him and this is what this video is for so how to customize your new thanos so before customizing really any, you obviously, you have to get some paints. This is just a paint tutorial. No molding or sanding down anything. This mold is perfect. So first getting paints is something I do recommend is you get a, a base before you even go to buy the paints, right? Get like some base plate and put some flat tiles of the colors you want, okay? And then once you go to the store, like a Joanne Fabrics or something, you could just open the lid for the thing before you buy it and, you know, put your finger in it and and put the paint against the actual plastic. And that will be the best way to see it. I've tried just looking up the Lego paint, but like the Lego official color palette, but it's impossible to see it on my phone to see how the color actually is. So what I recommend instead of guessing is actually compared to the actual Lego color that, you know, you, there is. If you can't find a tile of it, just bring it to the store with you so you can actually compare. It's the best way to get it. And also, when making a figure, first deciding colors, right? So when deciding colors for Thanos, uh, you want to make Infinity War Thanos, okay? So when finding reference images, it's really hard because whenever you look up reference images, right, they really only show you the top half of the character and not the back of the character as well. This comes up a crap ton, right? It's always the top off. Even if the original movie they're from shows their full body, I guarantee you the reference images you'll find on just Google search or whatever, they never show you the full body, which is frustrating. And if they do show you the full body, it's usually a toy or something, right? Which isn't that bad. Toys, you know, you can use them for reference. So for example, a color problem that pops up when I look up Thanos is some of the toys for the, the pants have dark gray pants but some of them have a more kind of beige-ish uh khaki kind of pants color and it's impossible to really tell which one it is because it goes back and forth so way i decided to determine which color to use right because you could really use either color but i wanted to be accurate so determine color is i just looked up thanos scenes on youtube this is a great way to do it because it shows you actual clips from the movie and you could just pause in the video and take a screenshot because they don't, for some reason, when you look it up on Google, they won't, don't show you those images from the actual movie where you see more than just the top half of them. It's kind of frustrating. So for the legs, I decided to go with khaki. For the boots, I'm going to be doing a dark brown and I'll demonstrate uh, how I actually mix my paints because I do not actually have a dark brown. So to paint with, I just have just this really crappy frailed up brush, you know, frail well. That's what I was going to use just to paint on. And then for the finer details is I do it the, um, there's one other customizer that did this method with a push pin. We have it up against and you do it real fine and detailed. Also, one more thing I would like to mention before I start painting is the Infinity Gauntlet to make it more accurate to end game boom here it is let me just put that on it already looks way better also with the infinity stones if you want to make an accurate thanos i don't have actually all the stones i didn't have the mind stones so i just painted uh 
I know, uh, I think it was, I painted the, um, soul stone yellow because I, because I actually do have, uh, I did have, because if you don't, sorry, if you don't know with the original wave of Infinity War sets, it was each, I think there were like a whole, I had like six sets. Each one came with a different Infinity Stone. And I've, I did legit, legitimately got the stone, got the Power Stone, the uh, Space Stone, the Reality Stone, and the Soul Stone. But I actually did not. I got, and I got the Time Stone from a friend who had the Sanctum Sanctorum set, but I never got access to this stone so i just ended up painting a different stone but i think it looks fine just the way it is you can still tell it's yellow even though it's not transparent like the other ones so first off we're going to paint the torso real quick before we go into anything else so you could just remove and since this actually has a removable head you want to get that out of the way now we for now we are not going to be touching this gold part so we're going to try to dodge this gold and what you're going to do, this whole upper area is going to be the dark blue. And then the um, lower area is going to be more of, you know, just this beige color. And then after that, we'll let that dry. And then we will um, continue. So, yeah, I'll do a, a short little time lapse of that. Maybe not even time lapse. I'll just click the video up. But I just got the paint here, so this is... I usually actually just kind of get it from the lid. I don't even put it in a separate container. Put that on my brush, then we can paint. It's going to be a bit hard while recording. So, see there, and like I said, you got to get close. But I'm going to make sure to dodge that where it becomes the molded plastic gold. So you can see there, boom, you got a peck. Also, with the inside of this area, you could paint that because if you don't know, there is actually a little gap between that and then the arm. So that, I think, will be fine to paint. Um, so I'm actually going to do that right now. Just don't paint the inside of the hole, obviously. And then, boom. So you can paint around there. Yeah, so already we got this dark blue going on. I don't know if I'm going to talk for this entire painting session i'll probably stop at some point oh yeah there you can see already looking fabulous so i'm going to paint the line down here it's this is going to be where the shirt ends and it goes to the pants right so i'm just doing it doesn't have an actual line there so i'm just making my own also he does have this weird like uh on the on his back, he does, his shirt actually kind of comes down like so. So I'm actually going to just replicate that a little bit. And it kind of goes over his buttocks a little bit. So you can see there. Now, all these messy lines that I'm doing with the brush, because the brush isn't really great for doing lines. I can fix that later with other colors overlapping. So I can overlap the colors to kind of make it um, more accurate and that's that's the thing with painting is you got to remember if something like it isn't accurate you could always cover it up with uh more paint so don't worry about having to erase stuff it's it's always just cover up right and that's also how you make lines as well how i make lines and uh how i think some other customizers make lines is that they just cover um it up with the base color or like a part of the line with the base color. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep the shaping they have here with the plastic, even though it doesn't, it's probably not that accurate. Uh, but you know, I'm just going to do it anyway to keep it consistent. And like I said, I'm not really going to touch the gold area until the end. And any little nicks I get on here, like right there, once that dries, I can easily scrape that off. The good thing about um, acrylic paint, which is what I'm using, right? is that it does scrape off easy, easy, you know. Also, also, I did actually used to use nail polish. You can use nail polish if you want. Uh, just note, it does actually kind of, uh, it dries differently and it kind of works a bit differently than acrylic. Um, one is you can't really get rid of it. It's not water-based. So if you want to uh, kind of clean it off with like water when it's still wet, it's a bit harder to do so, um, 
and so yeah and also nail polish dries way quicker so you're gonna notice this is gonna take a while pretty long time to dry but it's actually gonna be pretty obvious when it does because nail polish actually tends to kind of look glossy and look very wet unless you get like a matte nail polish and I actually used I did get a matte nail polish finish you know to make it um look better but look at that so we got the torso area now i'm gonna actually wait for that to dry actually you know what while i wait i'm gonna try some more details out so let's try some more modifications i'm gonna move this to the side and i have this stand where i put uh this whole paint stand kind of nasty and i got thanos his head right up there and i'm gonna try to actually modify it yes i'm gonna paint on thanos's head now i'm gonna get this dark purple i have and i'm gonna try some line work and if this doesn't work like i said acrylic paint is really easy to scrape off not so much nail polish nail polish you gotta use nail polish remover and even when you do use that nail polish remover is uh, will actually remove printing on the figure so you know do be warned about that so yeah and it's also a good way to remove printing if you really want so i get a little bit of see i get the push pin. i go to the paint get a little bit of that paint on i got just the paint from the lid i'm gonna try to make those little wolverine scratches he has on his head so first off i'm gonna try to make that little just a little bit of the scratch right ah shoot see even there i did a little bit too much easily when it's wet just kind of wipe it away so come on okay look at that see i like how that looks and that's that scrape is gonna kind of continue through through the eye okay so you get that line going on there Boom. And if I think these lines are too thick, once they dry, I could scrape them or I could overlap with this purple. But I don't know if this purple will actually match with the Thanos purple going on there. So I got those three little Wolverine scratches, as I like to call them. A lot of people theorize that they're from Wolverine. But, you know, I got them little scratches. So I'm going to try to do the same on the other side. I'm just going to do it upside down so I can still have it on this side of the camera. And there you go. So I got the three scratches on each side. If I don't like how they look, I could always, like I said, modify this when it dries or just it, when it's wet, I could just wipe it off easily. But I do like how this looks. I might modify it a bit later, but there you can see how I do that. Also, I'm going to show you some modifications I'm going to try to do to the arm. Um, now this arm sometimes i have the little peg here so i can do big fig parts if i was going to paint the whole arm in a certain color but i'm only doing a little bit of the arm so i think i could probably just hold it as i do the paint work i want to do now i'm just going to do the three lines uh more wolverine scratches if you want to call them that through the arm so i'm going to get more i like to shake up the bottle and then I could just open the bottle and use the lid of the bottle because there'll be plenty on the top of the lid so I don't even have to squirt it out of there. So here, I'm going to start at the base of the arm. And we're just going to make a little line that goes all the way up here, just straight line. I'm going to kind of make it end where the shoulder is. See, it goes up and up and up and then boom, right there. I'm going to have it stop. And I think that looks pretty good. If I wanted it thinner, like I said, I could just scrape it. But I actually like how that looks right now. And then I'm going to make 
two more of these bad boys. Here you go. So there's the Thanos arm with the three kind of scratches on it. Now, I did notice it kind of veers this way, like goes that way a little bit. Uh, it's not really an issue for me. I, kinda, I still like it and I'll do that on the other arm when I feel like it. So I'm just looking at the Thanos big fig right now. You can see even still parts of it have kind of Oh, shoot. I accidentally touched the paint. I usually do that sometimes. But like I said, you just kind of wipe it off to get it everywhere. Um, you see parts of it kind of have dried a little. See when it becomes a little bit more matte, as you can see right there. That's when you know it has um, dried. So that is still drying. Meanwhile, I'll show you some modifications I'm going to make to the Infinity Gauntlet. Yes. So... Uh, another color I'm going to get for outlining. Since I'm outlining it on gold, I'm actually going to, since I'm doing, since it's on gold, instead of doing a black outline, because I want to outline some of this stuff, I am going to do a brown outline. So I'm going to get some, another thing I use to store paint in is these little containers. They're great because I could have paint in here, but here, if I open this, I could still, you know, have room to stick my little uh push pin in there and get some of the paint out so for outlining like i said I'll, this is i'll show you some more of the fine detail stuff so i'm going to come in here those little crevices to emphasize that i'm going to put this in the crevice now it doesn't look good like that kind of looks you know crap but in a second it will look better once that little line dries and then i'll go over with some more of the gold paint I actually did paint this with my own gold before the video, so, you know, kind of cheated a little bit, but sorry about that. I originally actually had it in this really kind of crappy gold color, but then I changed it to a better one. So here you can see I'm just going along here, getting those, getting in the grooves to emphasize kind of the, the natural molding, you know, it already has. So you see... There's a little line there. I could go all the, actually I am gonna go all the way around. So look, so I'm going all the way around here, just getting it, the paint in the grooves with the push pin. And boom, you got that there. Oh, shoot, got a little bit on top, but it's all, shoot. Don't worry, it's all good. Like I said, just wipe it off with your finger. And look at that. It's already looking fabulous. Okay, so I got just kind of the stuff in the, the grooves there. Uh, to create some more of the detail on the gauntlet, I am actually going to do some, oh, let me get this one in that groove. All right, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna paint over with more gold to kind of make it look like so it's less these big brown lumps and more something a bit cohesive. Also, look here. I'm doing some more lines. Yes, I am. Wow. So here you see I'm doing some more just detailing on the gauntlet. So it's going to look a bit more accurate for this next one. I'm actually going to remove this center stone. The uh, soul, uh, that's the mind stone, I believe, right? Yeah, that's the mind stone. Uh, and give that a outline and brown. This shouldn't affect the stone, but if it does, you know, I'm, I don't think it will. It will be fine. And then 
we are going to do some of those weird bird looking details around the uh, stone. So we're going to go out like this, just a straight line on both sides of that um, little holster for the uh, mind stone, that little line. And then we're going to do a curved line going like so meeting up right here to get some of that detail in. So you can already see there, it's looking pretty cool in my humble opinion. Let's see, boom, okay, so you see there, it's a bit uneven, but I'm gonna add some more lines inside kind of, you know, amp up the detail on uh, the figure. So you see, look at that. It already has so much more design to it. And once, like I said, that brown dries up, I'm going to go over with a bit more of the gold just to refine it a bit. Also, I think if I just add some lines in here, that's going to look really Yep, already loving that design, and I'm just gonna assume the brown is already dried. You can insert the mine stone back into there, and boom, I did get some paint on the mine stone. I, I don't know how, it must have been on my hand. But like I said, if you have the proper paint, you could just paint straight back over that, and look at that. So there is the Infinity Gauntlet in the flesh i'll probably just go over some of the paint maybe off screen and uh yeah to kind of make just perfect but you can even see there there's just way more detail on that and it's honestly if you kind of practice with the push pin and whatnot it's it's not that hard and you can get some pretty cool looking results out of it so if you check back on the uh thanos body you could see here right it's becoming a bit more matte and um a bit more you know matte and everything and i'm actually since i kind of demonstrated some of it on screen i'm actually gonna paint the legs off screen so i'm gonna cheat a little bit but uh yeah and then once that has dried and then the legs have dried i'll show you just some mixing of paint how i usually go about doing that and then i'll go on to the uh rest of the customizing all right so here we have the thanos all dried up i did add some modifications off camera so yeah so here's the main torso and basically what i'm going to show you guys real quick is one how to do some thin lines um with the overlapping technique just demonstrate that and also demonstrate how i mix my paint because like i said i don't have a dark brown paint and like i said if you don't have a color immediately and you want to make the custom now don't want to go get the color you can still make it especially if it's like a darker or lighter color i usually do actually have darker and lighter like i have a dark red here and i have my normal uh red here because it's a lot easier that way but you don't have it you don't have it you know and plus like i said maybe i should get a dark brown but i don't have it so i'm gonna it's a good time to demonstrate how to do some um uh yeah some paint mixing so first off with this thin line in the thin line method i'm gonna come over here let me just get i got some stuff some pieces in the way because my desk is a mess i'm gonna get some of this blue. now i'm gonna do another blue line on the other side here so i'm gonna get some blue paint All right dip my um uh, my push pin in it and i'm going to try to do the exact same line on here so just kind of following that curve and see it goes to roughly where that gold mark is and i'm also going to change up that gold line as well so take the edge of this and then oh, oh, let me turn on another light so you can see that better boom all right let's see so gotta go like yeah so you do the little edge like so 
Then you just kind of go up, 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 and boom, right around there. So, got a little, oh, shoot, I, yeah, look. So, got a little bit there, but boom, I got that line, but it still is a bit too thick. So, you wait for it to dry. This side's already dry, so that's why I did it beforehand. So, I don't have to wait in the video and I have a point of reference so I'm gonna get my dark blue which is the base color of the actual figure let me get that out I can get some of my dark blue out dip it in there and then I'm gonna go over this blue with the dark blue at the thicker parts see there to kind of get it nice and thin so you do basically doing a secondary line over this one to get that thinner. As thin as you want it, and I kind of like it. I like it like that. I'm just trying to look. Yeah, I like that thickness. And I'm gonna do the same here with this gold line. Just to show you again, I'm also gonna add some more gold lines to that as well. So here I'm going to get my black, which I did a little black here. You see that's different than the dark blue. It's a bit hard to see, but it is slightly different. I'm using, like I said, reference images just to see where all the lines and whatnot are going. Get the maximum detail I want, okay? You can see that line has thinned out very slightly. And this one... as well so i'm gonna have multiple lines it's gonna be like gold line gold line gold line so with the thanos looking at the reference image it's not completely gold up here you got some black bits there's gonna be i think a black kind of brick right here a little black in there so i did also a base of black for this belt area see there's still some paint drying there you can see because it's glossier than the matte uh, then you know the other paint see there's a belt of black which i'm going to paint in gold so uh, usually for anything with a black outline what i like to do is I like to actually do the black in first and then do the gold inside it actually might be more efficient to do it the other way around where you do the inside the black outline around that and then to fix up the outline you use the base color of whatever the torso is but i kind of like to do it the opposite way I don't know why I just do so for this for the dark brown boots I can either put this guy on a display stand or just good thing about big figs is once the parts are dry you could hold it but if you if you're not doing that like you're painting the whole thing at once you can put them on some like paint stand and it's always good just if for customizing in general to have a stand where you could you know place your big fig on so I could place them here or on this like messy stand but I'm not gonna just for the sake of the video. So I have this messy bowl where I mix all my paints in this random Lego pits I, bits I cut off there. These are even a cut up push pin that I used to use. Um, so yeah, so first off, obviously I need to get my brown and my black. Now they're both in these containers so I can't really squirt them out. So what I like to do, let me get, let me get these guys out of the way. Sorry, sorry, on go, go blogging and just do big. Um, so I'm going to get out my paintbrush, which I, is right over here. So my paintbrush. And looking in here. Okay, look. So I'm going to, first off, let's do some of the brown first. So I'm going to open this container, right? Boom. Scoop some of the brown out to get a big clump in there. And I put that on the base. And I just got to remember where that is. So that is right over and there's a little pocket of brown then i'm going to clean my brush off um the way i actually do that i just dry brush a little right just try to paint all that off then i literally just wipe it on my hand like my hand's nasty i just wipe on my hand get a little bit a little bit of spit wring it out with my uh, fingernails like so and boom that thing is actually pretty clean because I am way too lazy to go actually get water like a normal person and do it. Now I'm now you don't actually need I know this one mixing black in to make it darker, you actually don't need that much. So boom, gonna get some black, right? 
did get quite a bit. So I'm actually gonna place it right next to where the brown is. My camera's having trouble focusing. But right next to where the brown is, I got that black little splotch right there. Dry brush. Actually, no, I don't need to because I'm gonna mix these. So first off, I'm just gonna start mixing them. I right, add a little bit more brown into the mixture until I get the color that I want. And right there, I actually think that looks pretty good for a dark brown. So I'm actually gonna just try that immediately on Thanos' legs. Boom. And by doing that, I actually realized I messed up the paint job up here because I've been holding it weird. Oh well, I can fix that later. So you see there, that looks like a pretty good dark brown boot. So yeah, that is uh, that. So I am actually gonna, this is a bit easier to do off camera with this, you know, big phone in the way. So I'm actually just gonna, um, you know, do the rest of, not the rest of the custom necessarily, but yeah, so the boot, I'm gonna do the rest of that off camera. And then, uh, yeah, actually I probably will do the chart just to do the rest of the custom off camera. But um, yeah, actually, you know, before I do that, let me, let me just uh, hold up. I think this area is dry, so I'm gonna go over that line as well. Then you can do some black, boxes up here so if I demonstrate I can demonstrate that for you real quick so I believe yeah so there's going to be like that is going to go up and back and around and yeah so I'm just going to quickly not very quickly, but just try to do the rest of the custom really off camera because it's a lot easier and there's not really a lot else to talk about. It's kind of straightforward. You just kind of copy the reference and paste it. It doesn't sound that, I mean, I'm making it, I'm oversimplifying it. It takes practice, obviously, you know, doing it, but uh, yeah, it should look pretty cool. So here is the final result for Thanos. Sorry, I skipped through most of the process and most of the kind of the finer details. But it was just kind of way easier to record it off camera. And you basically, you got the idea of how I do these thin lines. And how I kind of do the, uh, how I kind of made the custom. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll give you th full 360. But yeah, so if you guys want to see more kind of like, you know, step by step. How I go make a figure in the future. Please uh, tell me if you want to see it. If not, then, um, you know, I'll just do normal showcases. I won't show the process, but I wanted to show the process for this one. This is the brand new Thanos that we just got, and I thought it was pretty cool. So yeah, so there is my Lego Thanos. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. If you enjoyed the video, well, I mean, like, also leave it a like. That would be great. But if you want to go one step beyond and continue watching my content, why not, you know, give a little subscribe and do notifications on. You know, that's some cool stuff. And, you know, just, like, have a nice day. All right. Uh, and go watch the 2000 Load from Rango. And uh, ciao.